and also I have a audio for my video for my PowerPoint. So can you please let me know? What are the issues in aviatic cataract? It's not really just about performing surgery through a small pupil, but we must also remember that the patient has a disease which we need to take care of. So the first and second aspect that I need to look at is what is the indication of surgery and what's the visual prognosis? So most of the time, the indication of surgery is, of course, to improve vision for the patient. But sometimes we might be operating in order for us to have a view of the posterior segment. And therefore, the visual prognosis must be explained in detail with a lot of chair time taken up to counsel the patient so that they have realistic expectations postoperatively. And also to understand that the disease does not end with removal of the cataract, but the inflammation needs to be tackled separately. The timing of surgery is always extremely crucial. And this should be done in a window when the inflammation is inactive. By either, even by using free or perioperative steroids. The surgical technique leaves a few modifications from our standard cataract surgical techniques and also including the choice whether we can place an intraocular lens or not and what type of lens can be placed. For example, in pediatric patients less than 10 years or 12 years of age, uh, placing an intraocular lens is contraindicated. Post-operative regimen is extremely important to control the inflammation and, and manage other complications such as glaucoma, cystoid macrigma, and so on. Uh, otherwise, if left untreated, these would lead, lead to loss. So the timing of surgery, as I mentioned, should be during an inactive time. It's very easy to see what is active disease, but how do we know that they waited enough time? So it's not just enough to wait by rule of, the, by the protocol of waiting for three months from the last inflammatory episode but it's more important to look for lack of cells, no cells in the anterior chamber, although phlegm may persist. And I also look at the appearance of the normalcy of the iris scripts. That's a very good sign for me to realize that if the eye is, is quiet. The actual surgical technique con consists of two important parts. The first is management of the sinecure, and the second is the actual capsule plexus and the rest of the FACO procedures. So the sinecure can be released just by simple visco dissection in cases where there are very small or thin sinecure, but most of the time this is not possible. So we have to use some or the other technique to expand the pupil. So this can be as simple as sphincterotomies using vanas or a, or a micro scissors. We can use collar button devices such as Kublin's hooks, uh, as well as iris hooks to keep the pupil dilated throughout the surgery. And we can use eye rings such as the B-hex ring or the Malugin ring. The capsulorexis and the other FACO procedures are pretty much similar to most of the other case, other FACO surgeries that, that we are so used to. So this is a patient who's a 35-year-old patient with BKH who had a complicated cataract and a very shallow anterior chamber. Notice that the patient has almost 360 degrees posterior sinecure. So after making the side ports, and injecting viscoelastic with the help of a Sinsky, some of the sinecure, there's a space selected between the anterior lens capsule and the sinecure. And the pupil has opened up a little bit and further opening of the pupil simply with the help of Kublin's hooks, doing it very slow, taking care that I do not rip the iris because it's very fragile in young patients. And after initiating the rexus with the cystic tomb, the rexus is completed with the help of a micro forceps. So after that, most of the time, this is this amount of pupil size is adequate for us to safely perform cataract surgery, especially since the cataract is usually very soft in these young patients. So after hydro dissection, you can notice that the nucleus is, is maybe grade one to two. And by simple, almost like a FACO aspiration or with minimal energy, the entire nucleus can be brought out in total. The next part uh, involves a very cort a thorough cortical cleanup to ensure that we do not leave any of the inflammatory context behind. As you can see, it's a case with, with a very heightened red glow due to VKH or a sunset glow. So a single piece hydrophobic acrylic lens is placed in the bag, uh, making sure that the optics are well tucked behind the rexus, the haptics are well tucked behind the rexus. And finally, at the end of surgery, after cleaning up all the viscoelastic, I usually give either an injection of intracameral decadron or based on the case, sometimes I might give a posterior subtil injection or an intravitreal tangent synolone injection. But all of these patients would be patients where I've established that they're not steroid responders.
this is another case where the where the, the sinecure are much harder. The cataract also has a more advanced density in terms of the nucleosclerosis, the total cataract. And there's a large pupillary sinecure with, with a membrane which actually goes even behind the iris. As you're pulling it out, you can see that. So these membranes should be carefully removed. And we use four iris hooks to nicely dilate the pupil. And once we do that and have a very good exposure of the cataract, which is hard, uh, the further uh, cataract surgical procedures can be done fairly easily with the help of uh, a very good rexus followed by phaco emulsification. This is a 29-year-old patient who had recurrent uveitis, is HLA-B27 positive. And uh, this patient has a small bound-down pupil with hardly any vision due to an occlusive membrane. Also, you can notice that there is a peripheral idotomy due to past episodes of chronic of secondary angle closure or pupillary block. So this patient underwent cataract surgery. Uh, first of all, after injecting viscoelastic, Using Sinsky, a small portion is selected where you can insinuate the Sinsky below that. And then through that, you can apply Kuglin's hooks as you just saw me do. And after staining the capsule, we can have a very good capsular excess. Uh, notice that this patient also has a fairly soft cataract being a very young patient. Not as soft as you would expect because with the uveitis, the cataract is slightly harder than what you expect for the patients of this age. So after that, it is fairly easy to tackle the cataract using FACO and just that the pupil is smaller. So you should make sure that you don't trap it with the FACO probe. Otherwise, you know how difficult that gets, that makes your surgery. So once again, after complete cortical cleanup, uh, in this particular patient, we selected to inject Ozodex at the end of surgery. So after we inject uh, the intraocular uh, lens, an Ozodex injection was given to this patient. So the way the Ozodex injection helps is that it takes care of the acute post-operative inflammation as well as cystoid metallidema, which is very classical to see that happen within three to four weeks after cataract surgery in many of our patients with complicated cataracts. So this is the Ozodex injection at the end of surgery. So to conclude, well lung surgery is only half the battle. We should understand the type of uveitis. We need to work very hard for the pre, intra and post-operative control of the inflammation and we should be expectant of and expert in managing the post-operative complications.